two and a half years ago, I had a conversation with Francie Brawley about building a new All-Ireland movement. We decided we wanted to build a common sense movement that would help unite Ireland north and south, but also unite the people of Ireland north and south. We discussed the need not just to call for referendums or to hold white line pickets along the road, but to take practical steps towards a convergence north and south and incrementally erase the border in people's lives. Francie Brawley was an Irish Republican, a musician, a teacher and a Gael. He was an MLA in Stormont for his beloved county Derry and Dungiven. He was a founding member of AIN2 and a proud forder. I, he sadly passed away just over a year ago and I would like to proudly dedicate this bill, the All-Ireland Representation Bill, to Francie's memory here today. The discussion on Irish unity has gathered significant pace over the last number of years. Brexit has convinced many in the North that London is not interested in their future. Many of the, in the South understand that it's illogical that a hundred years after the War of Independence, the Tories still determine what happens here in Ireland. Demographics are changing apace. Political unionism is now in the minority, and Scotland is edging towards the British departure lounge. Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael are positively talking about Irish unity, but like St. Augustine, they're saying, Lord, make us united, but just not yet. Some within the establishment parties in the South are trying to hide behind economics, but London treats the north of Ireland uh, like an impoverished backwater. A partition, 80% of Ireland's industrial output was from the north of Ireland, around the counties that surround Belfast. Belfast was the largest city in Ireland and the north was by far the richest part of Ireland. The north has been impoverished by London's lack of interest in the 20th century in the same way that the south of Ireland was impoverished by London's lack of interest in the 19th century. The, e the key economic difference between the two jurisdictions is that the South can self-determine economically, but London's focus is on the English home counties. Unity is the key to unlocking Ireland's potential. Economies of scale, efficiencies in public service delivery, increased market size, larger EU representation are all obvious advantages. And there's also the question of justice. The, f the founders of this state recognized there was an inherent justice in all Ireland, the self-determination and independence. And that justice is as real today as it was 100 years ago. Many of the supporters of Fianna Fáil are heartbroken by their current leadership's desire to wear the clothes of Fianna Fáil's founding fathers, but detach themselves from the objectives of those men and women. The political establishment continuously say that there's nothing we can do, that the DUP in London hold a veto, but there's plenty we can do. We can start the process of north-south service convergence now. This will save money and ensure more efficient and effective public services throughout the island of Ireland. We can create a new Ireland forum now, inviting civic and political society to the table to discuss First of all, how to ameliorate the worst aspects of Brexit and then to start to, to discuss how to bring about convergence towards a united Ireland. And also, it's in our gift right now to allow for MPs elected in the north of Ireland to sit on all the committees in the south. There's no law stopping it. All that has to be changed is a standing order. And I wrote to yourself, I can't call you seeking, that we would start the process of changing standing orders to allow MPs elected in the north of Ireland to participate in all the committees in the south. It's also in our gift to allow Irish citizens in the north of Ireland who are MPs to attend the Dáil. Think about that. There's no impediment on this Dáil to, in large part, realise the objectives of the first Dáil peacefully and without any cost. Why aren't we doing it? If there's nothing stopping us to take that step, why is this doll refusing to do it? This aim to bill simply enables MPs elected to constituencies in the north of Ireland to sit, pose questions, and speak in the doll on the same terms and subject to the same conditions as any other member of the doll. It doesn't go as far as seeking voting rights for those MPs, because that may be a bridge too far for this particular government at the moment. But it does go a long way in allowing for, for MPs 
in the north of Ireland to be able to represent Irish people in the north of Ireland in an Irish parliament. And someday we in AIN2 want to see TDs from West Tyrone, TDs from West Belfast, from Newry and Armagh attend this stall. But in the interim, let's start the process where we can, where it's fully legal, where it costs nothing and where it's peaceful to bring Ireland together, north and south. Gurmila Mahogat. Gurmila is this bill being opposed? No, it's not being opposed, so the motion for leave to introduce is agreed. Uh, Deputy Tobin, do you want to move that the second stage be taken in private members' time? I move. Is that agreed? It's agreed.